Hey guys, my name is Jeff, and this is the legendary Porsche 959, an 80s supercar legend, which was the fastest vehicle when it came out for its time with a top speed of 197 miles per hour, and it was an all-wheel drive Porsche, providing the basis for the Carrera 4 all-wheel drive models, and it was so intriguing that it inspired the likes of many millionaires and billionaires like Bill Gates and Bruce Canepa, who would team up together to create what we now know as the 25-year import law. See, the 959 wasn't actually offered new in the United States, so they teamed up so they could import their 959. So that's this absolutely crazy all-wheel drive rally-inspired supercar slash off-road car that was developed by Porsche in the 80s and is what we'll be taking a look at today. This particular 959, number 121, is heading to the 2024 Arizona RM Sotheby's auction as offered from Silver Arrow Cars. Okay, so let's go ahead and move on to the exterior of our Porsche 959. So looking at it, it's in this beautiful red color that I think really stands out and has this nice contrast with the silver wheels. It's quite a beautiful car. But we can tell that it has obviously some 911 roof profiles and things, but obviously it's a drastically different car in terms of what they decided to do with the styling. And I personally like it. You have this air intake in the rear, which was one of the first times you'd see Porsche do that. It just has this big, angular, aggressive approach that I quite like. I think it looks fantastic. So let's take a closer look at everything that we've got going on up here. Now, obviously, there's nothing up here. This is a frunk for the car. We've got our Porsche badging, some cool, subtle intakes, adlets, some nice Bosch tail uh, headlights, which have these super cool rake to it, along with the, all these side intakes. And this is quite the interesting car with all the computer uh, leaps and jumps that were made with this, including things that could adjust the suspension of the car up and down to change the ride height, while also adjusting some of the different driving options that existed in the car as well. We'll go ahead and take a look up here. We currently have some brake discs, obviously, that are drilled in this case, some fairly massive Porsche calipers that barely fit the inside of the 17 inch five spoke wheels which are so iconic most people when they see these wheels will recognize right off the bat that it is in fact a Porsche 959. We can tell that this car is also significantly wider you can see that the way the nose comes out we have this wide body aspect which comes further off the frame here and really separates the car as it steps out. We have that 911 profile I talked about these cool looking sporty mirrors that sit on the front here you of course get wipers like you would expect because this is still a road car. Look at all of that. And of course, this spoiler, which is one of my personal favorite bits. If you go ahead and take a look, that beautiful looking spoiler includes this little mini rubber spoiler, which actually sticks out of the top over here. So absolutely incredible looking car. So iconic. It stands out so much as this big presence. And this particular car has a Canapa sticker on it because it's actually received some changes to the suspension as a whole. So this doesn't have the super complicated hydraulic system that would have come in it from the factory. But what an incredible looking car. I love the way the 959 looks. It's just such an iconic supercar of the 80s. So to take a look at the engine under the hood of the Porsche 959, you actually have to open the driver's door first, and then you have this unique tab. So you pull this tab, and that'll go ahead and pop the rear trunk of our 959. So we can walk around, lift up the rear hatch. So we actually have access to the engine. That's something you'll find in modern Porsches. And we can see our glorious, powerful engine. Now the engine for this vehicle is a twin turbocharged 2.8 liter flat six. So it sticks to its traditional Porsche roots and that produces 444 horsepower, 369 pound feet of torque. And that allows this car to be one of the fastest cars on the planet mixed with its six speed manual transmission. That's technically a five speed manual transmission if you don't count the Galen gear that sticks there in the off-road mode, so to speak. But really, you know, some people believe that that Galen gear was actually the first speed was a pseudo way to get around certain emissions rules. But anyway, back to the performance specs with the all wheel drive and that 444 horsepower the 959 could scoot to a quick 0 to 60 in 3.6 seconds with a top speed of 197 miles per hour however some people say the sport versions there were two versions of the 959 sport and the comfort the sport version could reportedly hit over 200 but i won't leave the skeptics out for that and won't be testing that today and then it's just such a really cool car to me especially when you look at everything in here it's a beautiful looking engine bay porsche you can see all of our various things including our ac in here we 
have our Achtung warning for some of our various labels in here. And then on the other side, we have the firing order and some of the other information. Now, obviously we even have some insulation, some fans on there, but the cool part is over here is kind of funky because if you look, you can access your power steering, but there's not a whole lot of other stuff generally available. So if you wanted to add oil, you actually have to come over here to this yellow tab. And on the side, if you pull the tab back, it flips open the side latch, and now you have access to add motor oil to your 959. How cool is that? What an incredible car. Cool rear engine with the all-wheel drive system providing a platform for future Porsche all-wheel drive products. And then of course here in the front you have your gas cap along with a variety of tools and whatever you want to put in here. Not in much in the terms of storage, but hey, you at least have that back seat inside of the car if you really needed to use a back seat for storage for taking bags on a trip or whatever you're going to do with your 959. Okay, so now we're on the inside of the Porsche 959. Now, obviously, this feels like a 911 right off the bat. We have these awesome heavily bolstered sides for the seats that feels incredible. All the gauges with your tack right in front of you, of course, being a traditional Porsche thing, with the exception of some of the water-cooled models like the front-engine cars of the 80s. But it's super cool. It has an iconic steering wheel, in my opinion, that has a sort of mundane look to it, but it does say Porsche 959 in the center, which is unarguable for how it looks. It looks absolutely incredible. But let's go through all of the cool, complicated switches and things that are actually on the inside of the car as well. So you actually have some of your suspension control bits, including your hazards, are actually visible right in front of you. And then we have some of the other controls for the suspension. And you have all sorts of fun gauges, starting with the fuel on the far left. And then you have even some of the other temperature for uh, some of the other uh, components actually in the car, like reading temperatures for it looks like the differentials. And then, of course, we have our boost pressure is also in our our tack along with some of our headlight lights and then we have the mileage which on this car is in kilometers because again these were not sold in the United States this car currently reads 32,000 kilometers so that's pretty incredible now on the right side we have a really really cool gauge which shows some of the driveline pressure in terms of how it's sending around some of the fluid and how it's sending some of the power so in here we have so our drive mode select and now the cool part is is you have your regular sort of daylight traction which looks like a picture of the sun then you have a rain mode a snow mode and then you have this absolutely brutal mode at the top which is just red for a crazy full all-wheel drive splits all the power and sends it to all four wheels so you can get absolutely brutal traction so i imagine that's not one that you would want to use very often as a 959 driver but it's in there nonetheless this car has a blaupunkt radio we have our ac controls next to that which are kind of hidden and you don't need because it's a race car we have our ABS lights are down here, along with some of our other fog light controls, cigarette lighter, even have a locking glove box, lots of cool fun stuff, a carpeted flooring along with our seats. And then in the middle here, we have some more controls. We have our hazard lights, we have a clock, and then we also have some of our, I like that it pops out, that's kind of a fun feature. And then we also have uh, some of our other keys, our suspension height adjustment, including the stiffness adjustment for some of the suspension, but that's, again, been altered in this car. Now, getting to the gear shifter is where we have some of the interesting controls because this has a what it appears to be a five-speed manual transmission at first glance because you have an extra letter you have a g where you would normally find first gear which would make this technically a dog leg if you were to use it in the traditional five-speed sense because first is technically over and down but in this case you have g where first would normally be now I've heard a couple different things. G stands for off-road in German, so that's supposed to be your off-road gear, and it's geared extremely short. But then some people say that that was an emissions thing, and so really the true first gear isn't actually true first, and it's really just got this kind of different gearing to meet certain emissions things, and then so really it's more like a six-speed. So uh, I'll let you interpret that however you want to. That's just some of the different stuff I've heard, but G definitely stands for off-road, so that would be uh, you know unrefutable to argue. But what a comfortable car. I like the side bolstering. It's fairly simple but you have all these cool technological buttons along with all the computers that are in the car to help adjust everything and it just looks like such a cool car not to mention the fact that you're sitting in here you got good visibility you have heated seats that are also power adjustable um, obviously being some of the benefits by going for the comfort is you get more of those modern amenities on the interior of the car but you still get to drive it now one of the other interesting things is the pedal the clutch is really really set far back but then the brake and the gas are a little bit more forward and it feels like they're slightly offset to the right which is kind of interesting Interesting. So I would say clutch is about dead center um, where the tack is in the car, which is kind of interesting. Then everything else is a little bit further over to the right. But 
nonetheless, it's a super interesting car um, with the way that everything's laid out. Seeing all the tech buttons that you wouldn't find in a normal 911 just makes it feel like a special car, including the fact that it doesn't say 959 anywhere unless you're looking at your steering wheel, which just says Porsche 959. Okay, so let's go ahead and drive the 959. Oh yes. It's really easy to go too far when shifting it over. It goes straight into reverse if you push it too far. Kind of gingerly push it over into the Galunda gear, or if you really wanted to, you could easily pull the car out in first. That's going to be the end of the video. If you enjoyed it and love the 959, you can hit that like button for me. I'd really appreciate it. Feel free to let me know down below what your thoughts are on this absolute legend. If you might have had a poster of it, if you love the race version of the 959, and of course, it's sort of new with the Porsche Dakar, the new version, let me know down below. And of course, if you get subscribed for future content like this, I'd really appreciate it. With that, thank you so much for watching the video, and I'll see you in the next one.